There needs to be the uh, hall in the the magical order of like you know making sure that nothing goes awry, whatever the fuck that's called. That could be called that is the joke because British people like that. Yeah. Because it's like minor disturbances department. Yeah. And so if somebody has a book that's like, for example, causing too much attention whoring, like the book was designed with magic, even say the person's way too much of their soul in it, to where it just shoots fireworks at you and makes nudie noises and does things and flaps around behind you, following you like a bird or whatever, then it all gets put in a certain section because people don't want it and they had it in their attic and it broke free and it's driving everybody nuts, for example. So then they have yeah. to run through there, you can imagine, and uh, all the books are driving everybody nuts, and they have to smack them away from them. Yeah, but, like, you know, it's like a dog kennel, you know? They got, like, the books, you know, chained up, you know, because, like, they're crazy. Yeah. But then, like, um, they got to, like, search the books for stuff that's relevant, even though the books, like... Have taken on too much of the original yeah. writer's energy. So in a then, crazy like, way. it's like crazy. You gotta, like, you know, think about what you want and, like, you know, force the books to show it. You know, because like the data keeps rearranging. You know. Yeah, because it's just it's just a Looney Tunes of base information in a book spiraling around. Gotta force the pages to solidify. Okay, so the particulars of, for example, a fight scene with Jack Nicholas' son where, you know, Death Eaters are attacking him, is he would uh, have uh, the overcoat thing you have with the chain across on, and so there'd be slow motion because gay people like this and other people who aren't as gay or emotional don't like it because it's like signifies emotional, like, strength and fortitude in a certain way when somebody you know, is old and yet still has strength and, like, is recovered, sort of. And it shows in their body, even though they're wearing a bunch of stuff and sort of hiding it in the movie. So you show off his strength by dressing him that way. So when he takes off the, the, the chain or whatever, it magically, supposedly, uh, comes undone. As he shrugs his shoulders, as he goes into, like, because he underneath it, because he's just walking, it's so long, you know, it's like goes all the way down on nearly, you know, to like past his knees at some point. So his whole Thompson submachine gun's hidden under it in his arm. Yeah. So then it like falls away. And then as it does, like in the lamplight, it like reveals through the thick fog, the gleam of it as it comes up and into view, you know, for the camera, all sexy like. Because we're working with shadows now, like you said, to try to fake it like it's 10 bit more because they're filming in eight. Yeah. So in order to do that, like I said... The only way, and I know it's disappointing, but that's why everybody does shadows in movies if they don't have the energy and they'll have an old man seizure, is the shadows, you gotta use different cameras, like I said, an orange can, because, you know, something CCD-wise like that, you can use gold in it too, who cares, in the sensor material. Um, then the fog has an interesting material to it because you spray orange acid through it. And I imagine when I spray orange acid, people see things that are cool, but I don't see it. So where they are, if they sprayed orange acid into the fog, you know, that's fogging in the air, I'd see it reflecting cool. At least I assume. Hey, you're kind of jumping around here. You, But yeah, you want to use the fog, yeah. Well, it's because it's so important in relation to his gun rising up through it. Oh, yeah. It has to be shadowing still in the fog light on the bottom of it so that you can keep the color in the top half priority with a digital program. Oh, yeah, of course. So that there's more color because you're just cheating and prioritizing constantly. Yeah. So the next movie has to be shadowier slightly, which works with the scenes we've already created up to this point. Yeah. So, you know, he raises the gun and it's got a bunch of brightness and shiny luminance on it up into the light. And it, like, as uh, Eamon advised me, I said it should have a tiger roar, and he said it should have a thunder clap with it as he's firing. Sorry if this is wearing you out. I'm talking too long. Um, and that, like, pierces the fog with, like, sort of, like, you know, how it would with, like, explosive waves of percussion, like, through it. And the Death Eaters, they're throwing spells at him. And he's, like, you know, a wizard that just spends all of his time doing nothing and working out is, like, the joke. So, he has a bunch of uh, spells that are all over his, his body as different items, his belt loop and different things. And they all activate and start glowing like rings on his fingers and stuff. And they make this like bluish, you know, sort of purple shield as all their green spells are slamming into it because they're all death kill you spell, you know. Yeah. They always do. 
and they're all hitting it and bouncing and making like different bell noises at different points depending upon how much power and energy they put into it. Because, you know, they have to focus their energy yeah. even more into how much energy they're using all the time sort of gay land magic Harry Potter. Yeah. So it'll be like zoom, zoom, dong, yeah. zoom, dong, dong. But even then it's like a bunch rain in, you know what I mean, as they initially start throwing them at him. You have high pitched, not high pitched, high sounding ones. Yeah. Not just low. That's what I was saying. And then it's like, yeah. Into a shield. Yeah. And when he fires back, it's like, you know, that, that sound and a giant orange, like, gold explosion out of the end of the gun because it's not a magic gun. But before all of that happens, uh, there's the sound on the side of it as it comes into the light. You see the glow. That's why we need the upper priority color of the water start to move and pour down a little hill into a pond and the ducks quack quack in it and a breeze sweeps through with wind from trees and stuff around it and like that activates all the way out to the end of the gun where there's like a ton of sweeping breeze as it glows up into firing you know what I mean like twisting yeah again you you forgot to mention it's filigree you're talking yeah, about yeah filigree you yeah, I'm just the reason why I'm I'm making faces at you is because you keep skipping steps of what you're saying, and so I'm just trying to keep it straight. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, you're mo you're good. We got to figure it out, I guess. We're we're good. Yeah, so it's all one movement though, so it has to be like practice yeah. because it's the way the digital is gonna catch it. it. Has to come up, and then as all the light reaches the end of the gun, it fires the initial shot. And then it comes out through a shield and a tiny hole in it that instantly, like, covers sh shields and covers. So he knows, like, he has to estimate where most of them are coming through at different hits, points hitting it. Yeah. Because they're firing from the same spot, so he has to aim at a point where, in his own spherical shield, that they're not going to be landing most in. Because you wouldn't want to take a bolt right back into him, like, that's the way he, like, he, like, carefully aims. I'm confused. Wouldn't he shoot right at a green point on his shield and then it would blast back into the no, death like eater slightly below because you wouldn't want the exact points that keep throwing bolts to come at to be the point you're exposing that you're firing through in case it comes simultaneously no you would want it to come simultaneously because then your magic would blast away theirs and kill them i'm confused you know what I mean? You're thinking like it's a bullet still. Yeah, you're right. That's so, better. Yeah. Okay, anyways, on to the next part I thought of. Then, because they don't get anything, because it's not an action movie for action people. It's all smoke, yeah. like they've already established it. The black guys, they explode into black smoke as it hit the flames hit them. <laughs> backward. Whipping out of the fog. The Death Eaters, yeah. With those those contrails that come off of jets I love so much I already described for our Yeah, audience. yeah. They go, oh, fuck. Yeah. And people scream and go, oh, fuck. And keep yeah. firing. And so it's like it goes, <laughs> and hits different people. Yeah, excellent. And then they all appear on the rooftops after he's fired at all of them. And then, you know, he starts, you know, jogging, like, slowly away as his shield, you know, is around him. As if they rain down, hitting on him. As he fires up at the roof, vaguely, and crenellations, like, burst off and crag away. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. I don't know. That's just, like, a scene. I don't know. All right. All right. So, you know how, you know, Harry Potter is set in a castle. Well, what if... The goddamn Death Eaters were in another castle. And uh, all of our major characters that are badasses, they like, you know, went back at them and destroyed them in their castle because I'm sick of Harry Potter castle always being attacked by the Death Eaters. That's a really good point. Yeah, so then um, they can fucking look cool and break through their defensive spell work on their shitty castle that's crumbled already, all held up with stupid magic, and then they can blow up their castle, all their crooked towers and stuff can fall down, as spells bounce all over, and like captured, um, uh, giants, you know, smash everything, you know, and um, all the rest of the stuff. And the only dragon that's a full-on dragon in the Harry Potter series breaks out of the basement, and I say full on because the other ones all have, except they're tiny, or have weird bloated distended bellies from producing gas. Yeah. Do you mean in Gringotts? 
I mean, in the whole Harry Potter series, there's only when we're following the canonical dragons yeah. they introduced. They said they all have weird wing arms that are, aren't wyvern arms, but they're yeah. definitely not dragons full on. There's only yeah. one. The dark, mysterious, black, purple one. So they're like, you know, trying to, you know, use its energy and it breaks free from the basement yeah. and destroys everything inside at a certain point once the battle's reached its conclusion. Like, yeah. explodes out of the ground and all the towers start falling as its giant wings lifted into the air and it blows flames in every direction and all pissed off. Yeah. And then flies off into the night. I guess, yeah, that makes sense. It's a good ending, you know, crescendo. Uh, yeah, then uh, uh, Emma Watson can, uh, you know, grab them and they can all blink away from the area, even though there's a spell that you can't disapparate because she's. Uh, she what she uses her time time turner pussy hole yeah. to uh, uh, untwist sexually and go back in time. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, no, her time turner to when the spell isn't there, then it disapparates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm a genius. Yeah. Yeah, but you gotta have an awesome action running scene where you know for no reason. There's another Asian song, a song like in Bullet Train instead of the correct song. But it's like sounds nice for what they're doing when they're running towards the castle. Harold Trotter and yeah. uh, what's his face? Yeah. And here's what we shouldn't do. We shouldn't use the song. Some of them want to abuse you. No. Absolutely Let's not. not use that this isn't a YouTube movies. montage. No. No, I'm just, I, I don't know. I just, it's so annoying when people use that and everything. No, I mean something upbeat. Yeah, yeah. In a certain way, at least. I don't know what to think about it. Now that Emma Watson has uh, done hydroshock therapy and turned all witchy again, now we really got to get her back into the Harold Trotter series. So I was thinking when they visit um the remains well not the remains the outer remains aren't kept up but the main castle still magically preserved of course one other piece of you know merlin's castle while there hermione granger from the future uses a giant time turner that's located like you know on a pedestal that you spin to go backward in time before she's even born to like kick ass you know because she's super proficient at endless spells because she's eating all her veggies, you know? So then um, that really gives her the ability. We're just trying to build a team of awesome, you know, wizards with cool facial expressions to act like they're destroying all the Death Eaters. Yeah. Also, dress in sexy lingerie, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gotta have a scene where you're dressed in sexy lingerie for the audience. The other thing is, you know, you like show up at the yeah. door and it's like you gotta get dressed. They're coming, and then she's, yeah. and then I'm coming too. You know what I mean? <laughs> but the wings that people grow as part of their Patronus thing, that's connected to. It takes such a large amount of energy that it has to be through the descendant of Merlin, who's of course Eddie Redmayne or whatever that character, and then in the in the vicinity, he's able to imbue them with that additional energy from the spell book of Merlin's, you know, because it takes so much magical energy from everything to do so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, bad character. Yeah, James, J.K. Rowling's not getting away with ruining the Harry Potter thing, and she didn't, because everybody's went right around her. Like, um, Harry Potter and Malfoy are fighting like just throwing magical punches at each other just like his ancestors would do and so like um that's in the second book like the uh, the school's watching them beat the shit out of each other and cheering them on like they're just supposedly holding wands but there's just blows flying at each other and they're just getting slammed around yeah, it's just pure energy it's yeah just, because they're more energized than the whole school because they're as so energized they're disobeying the words of power that supposedly everybody's channeling through the uh, original wizard you know which is mentioned Merlin. in the harry potter it's story. already mentioned that way 
And so, you know, they just have raw energy and have to, you know, eat a massive amount of asparagus to do it or something. I don't know. Or in Harry Potter's <laughs> case, uh, butter-filled beer. Yeah, butter beer from titty milk from some witches or something. They just remove content infinitely. But um, what we're getting around to here in the future uh, movie now is that... um. Right, Hermione goes back in time with Ron, and their relationship, even in the movie series, was like, yeah, they kind of maybe would fuck, but then, you know, Ron just has sex with those, you know, Indian twins, because he's, you know, too, there's, everybody does that, if they're too British, I don't know, so then she just is like, you know, kind of friends with them, and she's sometimes fucking Malfoy real passionately, you know, they meet up and bang in the moonlight on top of the Himalayas or something, you know, but anyways, the point is, she has a green gemstone, you know, on her neck given to her by Malfoy, so then when she's in the past using the giant time turner at the complex place, castle area, so she can be within that area, like, the Death Eaters are defeating her and, you know, sucking the wizard juice out of her. So then, like, uh, Malfoy appears out of the locket on her, uh, played by Grant here. <laughs> and he says, because Grant's been through a lot of crap in his life, uh, you know, <laughs> oh, my heart, you know, as, like, he walks like a shield between uh, her and them as he like absorbs like death curses well, and he's it's, like, it's the classic thing yeah. that the guy always yeah. like, oh, <laughs> oh my heart oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course you're exaggerating yeah. that's that's a little absurd but it's yeah. not cartoony it's a touching moment yeah. but yeah that's what i would do baby because it directly fits in with the gay ass content of the series, but makes it straight, you know. Yeah. This so. Is MP3 player, <laughs> it's our Eclipse MP3 player, manufactured in the moment of the most powerful eclipse. Wow. Wow. Actually, there's some more powerful eclipses coming up. The drain your balls. <laughs> Leave your balls quaking. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that sums it up. That's the moment. And then, yeah, it's like Malfoy's all heroic. And people finally understand how much he needs that pussy, you know? No, it won't stop. All right, once Johnny Depp's you know, got his penis grown back, you know, and he's in the future again, he'll realize his penis is gay now, right? Everybody does, right? So I'm thinking the plot is because he wants to be part of Harry Potter because everyone's so gay that the other guy who was playing the role, uh, Hannibal Lecter, he just was his number one acolyte who, like, was using some sort of spell long term to look like him that's not a polyjupes potion. It fools people the other way. Like, he just looks regular, but their brains are convinced it's the other guy, right? That's an easy solution. Yeah, so then actual Grindelwald, Johnny Depp, comes back into the situation and says, you know, you stole my lover. No, I don't know if we want to go that gay. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I mean, know. that's kind of drama. You that, know? That's a lot of drama. That's, it's a... <laughs> <laughs> we have to do this now. It's too funny. I need... I'm sorry. No, this is serious. Okay. This is not a laughing matter. Gays really need a good movie series, and they, they need to express, you know, who they are here, you know, in these latter years, after all of these, you know, health issues. I think it's their time to shine and prove that all the stigma of, like, AIDS being bad, because AIDS is just means you have an active immune system. That's it. Yeah. So HIV is real bad. That's just another, you know, terrible disease killing you of actual, you know, viruses in you doing things. You don't want that. That's why they call it HIV AIDS, yeah. not just AIDS. That yeah. doesn't make any sense. Everybody can get AIDS. It's autoimmune disorder. So yeah, I think that's how I can fit Johnny Depp back in, you know? It'll be it'll be a real sensual scenario. We'll have to throw some sensual salamanders in there. Yeah. People ask how Hermione Granger knew to go back in time to a certain point. 
to affect something with the Death Eaters. She just says, well, because I read old newspapers. Duh. Like, just the easy plot. Like, I just have to point that out to everyone really quick. So in the future, uh, Rupert Grant, you know, uh, Ron, Ronald, is forced into the role of, like, working for the Aurors like it's MI6, sort of, where he, like, handles the gadgets, including, like, muggle gadgets, because his father was sort of pushing to become that s position. So then his father retires, and they say he has to do it, and he's pretty good at it, and it's better than doing things dangerously in the field, you know. So then he's around when Emma Watson's going to use the huge time turner of, of Merlin's to appear in the past when the castle there is going to be attacked by Death Eaters because, <laughs> because Ronald's parents are there, um, in the past threatened, so the very timeline is being threatened of his existence by the <laughs> Death Eaters, so then she's like, hey, are you gonna go back with me in time, and then he's all like, well, I guess I have to, you know, be a big man, and, you know, jump through the time turner portals, zappy suction, um, whatever, because... You know, when you're a coward and your very existence is on the line, then it's amazing what will happen. That's the concept I want to go with here.